Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. And don't forget, I get asked, probably the question I get asked the most is, my bike doesn't start, doesn't spark, doesn't run, you know, what, what could I do to fix it? Right, very, very common question. Good question. Occasionally, the question is asked about the China bikes, and this is one of those 72, 70 cc um, China quads. It's um, I actually thought it was a 110, but it's only 70 cc. It's just not just not a lot here to this. Anyway, um, so what I'm going to do is let's do a quick troubleshoot through it. If you unplug the wire harness for the motor, right? This is the motor, this is the wire harness. Forget the starter, forget everything else. This is the wire harness coming out of the motor, right? You have a flywheel and a stator and a pulse generator in here. So that flywheel generates electricity to go to your regulator, which does your 12 volt system. Well, let's assume you're going to jump it, your battery's good, or you have some trick you're going to use to make the starter go round and round. So you don't have to worry too much about this part of the circuit for the moment. But you do have to worry about the green wire, in this case the black red and the blue white. You guys could see I already got my meter. I hooked it up to this bolt, which gives me body ground. And then you just start looking around. You go to the lowest range on your multimeter and you see is my motor grounded? Pretty close to it. I'm getting, you know, 0.9 ohms. That's probably about the best you're going to do, right? This is a cheap Harbor Freight meter. Right? Even if I touch directly to it, I'm not really getting much below that. So, 0.9 is pretty good. Right? Let's see if I can get it back down there. So, there you are. So, I know my frame is grounded to the motor. And then if I check this green wire, which is ground on the actual stator, I get... You know, print near the same, you know, 1 ohm, 0.9 ohm, something like that. So that's your ground wire. So your ground should be hooked to your body ground, right? Your ground has to be continuous. You got no ground, you got no reference, you got no nothing. You got no spark, or you get an intermittent spark. Um, you could cook your CDI that way, so make sure your grounds are all good. So you always start with ground. Good, we're all done with ground. We happy, we're happy. So, green wire, ground to the engine, you know, one to two ohms to the frame, one to two ohms. There you go. Very happy. Uh, black red, right? I'm still hooked to frame ground right there. So, black red. We have to go up a range. And you can see we're getting, you know, 386. When I checked it before, I got somewhere around 400. Depends how well you're hooked up to it. And then go down a range and blue white. You're seeing about 132. I got about 165 last time I checked it. It depends how well your wires are hooked up and so forth. So you guys got an idea. So those are the three wires that come from the engine and there you are. If you then go to where the CDI plugs in. I took the CDI out of there. Okay. You look on the back of the plug, you got a 
black yellow or yellow black right well where does that go goes right here to your spark coil and when you check that you will see somewhere around three ohms give or take a little bit right ignition coil the next one down blue white we already checked that right that goes to your pulse generator somewhere around 135 ohms 165 ohms you get the idea the next one CDI and that's the black red somewhere around 400 ohms right black red 400 ohms so somewhere around 400 ohms next one down is your on and off switch if you want this to run it should be opened if your on and off switch is um, turned off that should be closed obviously or a short circuit or one or two ohms okay um, if you find a short circuit there if you find that means it's on, on the off position and it'll never want run. In this case, most harnesses run a green wire up there for ground. In this case, they're running a black wire up there for ground. And once again, that should be one or two ohms. But dumb little things, when you see a hacked up wire harness like this and you see stuff floating, right? Well... These wires plug into the motor, but you can see very quickly, if I were to plug this in, the only wire that's available to plug in here is green. So it goes from green to black, and then the black goes to the CDI, okay? So you gotta make sure, as you're doing all this troubleshooting, what's the condition of my harness? Your bike will not run unless your CDI is happy. So if you unplug all the engine wires and then go to check your CDI, your CDI is not going to be happy because all your engine wires are unplugged. Plug them all back in, including the ground wire. Stuff like this also messes people up because when you unplug it, you go, man, I got a green wire and I got a black wire. Oh man, where does the green wire go? Where does the black wire go? What do I do? Lose something? Part of my wire harness is missing. Well, if you unplug it and you're paying attention, you'll notice part of your wire harness is not missing. You'll notice that's the way it was when you unplugged it. If somebody already hacked on it for you, now you got to start sniffing around. Where does this black wire go? Oh, this black wire goes up to the CDI. And what wires do I have on the CDI? How come I don't have a green wire here? Oh, I don't have a green wire here because the ground is now black. Oh, they did a wire swap on me. Um, believe it or not, wiring on these things are pretty rational, right? They're not going to put an extra wire coming out of this because if you build a million bikes and you put a million extra wires on it and each wire costs you 10 cents just for a number, you've just wasted $100,000. And that could be the difference between a factory being profitable or a factory not being profitable. So why would you want to put an extra wire anywhere? So whenever you look at anything, say, what wires do I need? You're always going to need ground always 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 going to need ground you're always going to need a pulse generator otherwise your cdi doesn't know where your engine is and if it doesn't know where your engine is it doesn't know where to spark you're always going to need a power source for a cdi that's what the black and red is if you got a battery you need a way of changing charging the battery sometimes there's three yellow wires that means it's three phase sometimes there's a yellow and a white wire um, that means it's two phase. Sometimes there's just a yellow wire. That means it's one phase. But the yellows or the yellow and white wires, they're to um, run AC to your um, regulator. And then your regulator turns AC into DC. And you can see it coming out of here, right? See the... If you look at the plug on there, you can see white which is one of the wires out of the stator you can see yellow 
which is the second wire out of the stator. Then you got red. What is the red doing? That's positive for charging the battery. And then you see black, and black is ground for charging the battery. Back to the reference thing. Anyway, so I hope this helps, and I hope these readings help. And if you have questions, please ask. Um, these numbers are pretty typical. These colors, they do vary around a little bit. I've seen stator wires, typically yellow and uh, white for charging systems. Black and red is pretty common for, the, uh, for an AC CDI, the stator for the AC CDI. White and blue, pretty common for, um, for the pulse generator. Sometimes it's just blue. Um, green, ground, black. Black is normally uh, battery negative, which is at ground potential, but normally it's battery negative. Anyway, I hope that helps. Um, troubleshooting these things, if you really don't know what you're up to, can be interesting. I also, um, people tell me stuff, you know, like, well, I see 12 volts here, I see 12 volts there. For the ignition system that runs most of these China quads, I'm not going to say all, um, but in most cases, they're copied from the Hondas. And in almost all cases on the Hondas, I'm sure Honda might have put some bike out there that I don't currently own, but in most cases, the Hondas use... AC pulse generators, which means most of the China, China quads use AC pulse generators. Every once in a while, you will find one that has a 12-volt DC-powered um, uh, CDI unit. And as a matter of fact, I guess it's called the GY6. Um, I actually put a GY6 CDI unit in there. And I put eight batteries in there, which gave me my 12 volts. So now I got a CDI unit in there. I got 12 volts to power it, and I have the coil in there. So when I hook up to a motor, the only things I need from a motor are ground and the pulser, right? Because that tells me, once again, where the engine is and where I should spark. Uh, then I take the spark plug wire of my portable CDI unit, right? And I just plug it right into the spark plug. And just for good measure, I have an extra ground that I hook to the case of the, um, of, of the um, block here, just to make sure that my full spark energy gets to it. Once again, I, I hope I hope this helps. What I'm about to do with this thing, I'm about to pull the engine off the rear end. And it's supposed to go into the 1948 Cushman. So that's, that's probably what's going to become of this thing. I took this thing out for a ride and with my weight and center of gravity, um, it doesn't do very, I mean, it pulls me along just fine, but it's very unstable. And you guys could see the frames are already cracked here. So for a 100 pound kid riding around on this thing, not too bad. For a, you know, almost 200 pound adult riding around on this thing, not so good, right? That's that's how dumb things happen so um, and even taking this thing and trying to cut it up and make it like wider bigger um, it's really it's the the metal the metal isn't isn't very good it's not very thick it's pretty it's really pretty thin right it's like I mean I don't I don't know, you really can't see the thickness, but it's it's like paper thin. This is about twice as thick as it is. These pieces they welded on are actually thicker than the tubing. So, you, uh, for an adult beating about on this thing, 
Uh, it's a good idea if you like getting hurt because it's probably going to break and you're probably going to crash. So, you know, whatever gets you through the night, I guess. All right, folks, once again, I hope this helps. I want to thank everybody for watching and commenting and subscribing. Please ask questions. Your questions make me better at uh, doing what I do, so please continue to ask. Remember to keep your feet down, keep your head up, and get out there and enjoy all your days. Bye now, folks.